Hey everyone, D-Dub Squizzy here uh, to talk about something important and exciting to me. Um, I've got Terraria going on just in the background, uh, in case anyone cares. Hold on. Anyone who's watched whoop, any videos that uh, aren't official playthroughs or anything like that for, of mine will know that uh, I do stuff like this pretty regularly. This is one of those. This is a uh, one of the newer maps from from the other thing where you can start in the underworld and work your way up. I had never done it before, so I decided to do it with this character, and it's been pretty weird so far. Uh, anyway, that's not why we're here. We're not here to talk about Terraria. I'm here to talk about something exciting to me, which is my new book. So, I have been. I'm, I'm by no means a great writer, but I have been working on writing a book for uh, for a decent while now. Um, I've been developing the story for years and years and years, but I, I only just started writing it a couple months ago. I finished writing it, and it is now published on Amazon. Its, uh, it's link is in the description. It's a fantasy series. Well, the first first in a three-book series of this fantasy world. Uh, I've never really done anything like it before. I don't consider myself a good or, or even, a great or even good writer, because uh, I don't really... I don't have any real experience in the field, and I've never really done anything like it. Uh, it's, it's pretty pretty different and new for me. So, I'm not here to try to say that it's, you know, the greatest thing that has ever existed, or anything even like that. Only reason I bring it up is because, uh, frankly, starting from nowhere is very difficult. With, like, no resources, I kind of have to use whatever I can. People may know, anyone who, who's watched me with any regularity, would know I don't ask for subscriptions, I don't ask for likes, I don't ask people to share stuff or anything like that. Even though it is, truthfully, pretty fair to do. I mean, it's 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 a free thing. It's the only thing that uh, you can really gain on YouTube. and It doesn't cost you anything. So I get why people do it, especially when this is their livelihood. But I do YouTube for fun, and for me, whenever I'm watching a video... And a person keeps, you know, bringing it up, or even brings it up at all, it really takes me out of everything that's going on. Even though I totally get it, and I do. Well, I don't do that for my videos. Turns out, though, I am going to do that for my books. So, that's really why this video exists, is to ask people to go to the link and check it out. Uh, if you don't really like reading, you know, don't bother. <laughs> Again, I don't think it's great writing. I think I think it's okay. I think so. I think it's pretty good. Like, it's alright. It's not terrible. I like the world and, and, and characters and story and everything uh, more than the writing itself. But we're both biased towards our own stuff and hypercritical of it. So I don't really trust my my understanding. Basically, the only way you'll know is if, uh, is if you go check it out yourself. Boy, I'm really out of it. I made a rookie error here. Um, so there are two versions available. There's, ow, there's the, oh, oh, go, go, oh, I'm dead. I'm so dead. There's the, the book version, the hard paperback, not hardcover. Uh, I don't actually have a, a hardcover. I thought about it, but decided not to. There's the paperback version, and then there's an ebook. Um, both of them are available on Amazon right now, uh, and should remain that way. Here we go. This is what I meant to do at the start. For uh, for anyone who would be interested in buying it just to support me, which I don't think anyone would be, I have I, do, I hardly have a devoted fan base. But uh, but if anyone is for some reason interested in doing that, uh, you should know that the paperback or the the ebook is like seven six dollars cheaper, and I make twice as much money off of it. I prefer the hardcover myself. Um, just because, or, or not hardcover, the paperback. Just because I've always been that way. I like actually having the paper in hand. I've always enjoyed that more. Yeah, might as well. So... Um, 
I'm sorry, I keep losing my train of thought. It happens when you do something like this. It might be wise to just not play anything in the background, but I think it's a little more engaging. Plus, it gives me something else to talk about. So, as far as this world goes, um, it's a it's a fantasy fantasy world. I want to be clear about something right off the bat. Um, in no way does this book represent, or is it supposed to represent, some form of allegory or real-world commentary on anything going on now. Uh, I don't think it even comes across that way at any point. It shouldn't, as far as I know. My, my views and beliefs can come through, um, especially as they pertain to just human nature in general. Like that, that will be prevalent because that's just how writing any sort of actual art creation works, is what you believe will come out. Um, but that's, that's pretty standard stuff. None of it is, is meant to be taken as allegory. It's a, uh, it's a fictional world where fictional events are taking place with fictional people. And it's meant to be completely read that way. Solely for the purpose of entertainment. Now, like I said, it's the first in a trilogy. So, two other books, I, I will be... I haven't started the second one yet, but I will be. Especially, depending on how well the first one does. Uh, I might start it sooner rather than later. But there will be two others. Um, if anyone reads those, or reads the one that, that's out now, uh, The Golden Siege, and is curious about anything, really, in the world, I have pretty much... There are some things that are deliberately left up to interpretation, but they're pretty few, far between, and minor. If there's anything people really want to know, uh, feel free to ask, especially in the comments here. I am more than happy to talk about it. Now, do bear in mind, if it's something that will be addressed in a later book, just to avoid any sort of spoilery stuff or anything like that, I probably will not give a whole bunch of insight into it. Just because it'll be addressed in a later book. At which point, if there, if there was still confusion, I might do a similar video to this one at that point. Um, I would talk about it as well. Oh man, I'm getting destroyed by these suckers. This is on Expert, in case anyone is curious. Okay. Um, yeah, I'd be more than happy to talk about that. If something is especially not addressed in the book, um, that I will gladly talk about. Just, dang it. Because, you know, I kind of know everything about my own world. Which is by design. And like I said, I, I don't leave a whole lot of stuff up to interpretation. Pretty much all of it has deliberate answers. Um, if anyone has issues with it, so... I know that the writing is not going to be perfect, right? Like I said, first thing, or first book like this I've ever written. Closest I've done is writing a couple short stories that were very short stories and weren't very good. So this is sort of like a, a major difference as far as the stuff that I normally do. And I have no experience with anything like this. So it is pretty new to me. I know it's definitely not going to be perfect. So I ask for people's patience on that front. I try to make it good. But at the end of the day, it, it, it's not going to be... It's not going to be perfect. At least from my perspective. Who knows? Other people might like it a lot. I mean, let's be honest here. I like Harry Potter. The, the story and everything. I've never sat down and read the books, but I have seen some portions of them. And while the characters and the, the story and the universe are pretty cool, and, and the characters especially, I think, are uh, exceptionally well worked out, um, the writing's not great. Like, it's not terrible. Well, it's not, it's not the worst. But never have I looked at the writing in it and thought to myself, you know, that's, that's really good writing. It's... It's kind of exhausting, but the, the stories and the universes can still be fun. I, I sort of see mine that way. But again, you're kind of your own biggest critic sometimes, while also being your own uh, number one fan. So, I try not to judge it too solidly one way or the other, because I really just don't know, and I probably never will. Because I can't really make accurate uh, predictions on my own stuff. Regardless, I am. I want to hear what people think about it. So, whatever you think, feel free to uh, 
to post in a comment on this video, like I was saying before about other stuff too. Because I'd be interested to hear what people think, especially if you have questions. If you really like it, for one reason or another, uh, it really helps me out if you review that on the place where it came from, if you review it and give it a positive review. Because that helps the word get out, because I have no money to do any marketing or anything of the sort. So that's that's one of the things that would be the most help to me, is, uh, is doing that. If you really don't like it. If it's terrible, let's put it that way. If, it, if this is a truly terrible book, and I should not have written it, because it's just that bad. Um, then it wouldn't really be right of me to ask people to, you know, keep their mouths shut about it. If you have some issues with it, and you feel like you don't, it doesn't deserve a positive review, but it, but you want to voice your concerns, or want it to be improved, or this sort of storytelling improved, then what I would ask is that all of those sorts of comments be left here, on this video, because I do read my comments. Even if I don't respond to all of them, some of them because I have nothing to say in response. But those I want to hear. Because I'm willing, I want to improve, right? I'm not perfect, I know that I have never written anything like this, it's a, it's a whole new big deal. Ah, uh, of course. And, uh, and other people likely have insight, but any negative reviews on the book itself, like on Amazon, uh, would likely be pretty unpleasant as far as its, its continued production or visibility. So, it's sort of a favor I'm asking. Interesting. Instead of, uh, of review bombing that, if you don't like it, I would, I would ask that it be left here. Because real criticism, I do listen to and I do take. Because I want stuff to be quality. Well, you know... I've decided to write, uh, or to, to record a video about this, but I don't know that I really have a whole lot else to say. I don't want to go into detail on the video. I mean, I guess I could go into a little bit, honestly. <laughs> and just start, start talking about the book and things in it right now. And just sort of leave the, uh, if you haven't read it, but you intend to and don't want any spoilers, stop watching now and come back later. But I don't know, that feels a little, a little tacky almost, too. Kill the ghost. Thank you. His character is meant to be a mage, but he's pretty, pretty early, pretty young as far as mages go. Still, I have more than just these three books planned as well. Um, once I'm done with this series, I, I was debating actually making it four books instead of three because the more I thought about it, there's like a in the third one. Um, there's a, a part of it where the whole, not really tone, not not really story, but sort of the setup on on how most of the book telling is done, or the storytelling is done in the book, um, it, it sort of adjusts pretty heavily. It shifts a bit. And it's in such a way, it almost feels like it should be its own book. But at the same time, when I thought about it, it's like, that's only the last third or so of the book, of the whole story, really, where, uh, where that's the case. Like, I don't think I could warrant making a whole new book just for that. So I figure I'm just going to put it all in one. And I do my best not to artificially inflate things. Tell you the truth, I wrote this book on, uh, on different software than normal. Actually, I don't know what is normal. I don't know what people normally write in. But what I wrote on when I was done with it, its length was... Die, you die. It was like 200... Yeah, it was like, it was like 212 pages was its max length when it was done. And so then I... Uh, I adjusted the fonts on it. Or well, not really the font. I guess, no, technically it is the font, yeah. I was using Times New Roman to type it, mostly just because that's what I was used to, but also because it, it didn't matter that much. I was just in the initial writing phase. I wasn't into formatting yet. So I decided to change the font a bit. I chose a different one that I liked the look of more, that I thought fit it better. Um, and that happened to add 50 pages to its length. So it was like 260 pages. And these, by the way, are like full-length Word document type pages, like like 12 by 11 inch pages. This is how... And, and so that, that seemed absurd to me. 
like yellow slime got me right before I could get this. That that's typical. Um, I went in and I shifted the spacing around, dropped it down to like 220 pages or something, and I was like, there, that's solid. And then when I went in to actually make the book, I of course realized pretty fast. Right, most fantasy books ooh, are not 12 by 11 size. They're not here to be a letter. Oh. And so I, uh, I adjusted the font a bit. No, not the font. The, the formatting. And it ended up at like 282, I think is what it's at now. Which isn't terribly long, honestly. Not, not for something like this, but it's, it's reasonable length. And even that seems to me to be a bit overinflated. I try not to drag things out unnecessarily. Oh, right, they're in the pots. That's why I kept getting sneak attacked by these friggin' things. I don't know, I do enjoy the writing regardless. Actually putting all these thoughts, so I... I have an imagination, let's say. Everything it comes up with isn't gold, but it does come up with a lot of things. I can say that with a certainty. And I have developed a couple dozen different worlds, universes, stories, with hundreds of characters and objects and events. And I like most of them. That, you know, that's why I made them, is because I like them. Some of them were just nonsense. I kind of did something with them, and I was like... You know, maybe there's potential in the future, but probably not. This is, this is likely where this story should just end, is here. And I should never return to it. And some of them I return to many times. My The thing I would call the magnum opus is this ginormous hodgepodge of chaos that would be more suited to, like, a comic book or an animated series than an actual book, which is why I didn't try to write that one first. No, when I looked over my stories, the one that stuck out the most to me in terms of, of how to put this into a book was the one that I made. Which was actually one of my more recent stories. I might look into uh, to committing more of them to this sort of thing. I, I was thinking about doing a bit of a, a radical almost type book. By that I mean different than anything I've read or really heard about. Just in its presentation. <clears throat> That's why I got killed by a yellow slime. Mostly just because the one, the type that I was thinking of, just seemed pretty fun. It was, like, really what I settled on. I thought about how would I present this, and it I feel like it'd be a kind of a cool thing. And so I want to do that. Uh oh oh! I'll try to move faster. I swear, these traps are absurd. How do people do this in hardcore? I guess you look. Use the eyeballs. And that will also probably be a three-part series, but I don't know. We'll see what I might do with that one. Of course, if this one completely tanks, if this book does. Like, not only... If it gets no attention, I'll just keep going. If it gets a lot of attention, but not in the way that I would want it to, um, that's probably just gonna be it. I'm like, well, clearly I'm not cut out to do this. I tried it. It was neat. It was fun. But apparently it was also terrible. So I should just stop. If that happens, that's whatever. I might still not actually stop fully, but... It'd definitely keep me from doing a lot. I don't know, I'm just asking you guys, if anyone likes to read... ...that I'm asking, please go check out the book. That's what it really boils down to. I put in many hours... ...and, uh... ...and I like the story. And I'm curious to see what, what people think about it. Plus, it um, could open up more avenues and stuff for me. So, yeah, if anyone is interested, go uh, go check it out in that link. If not, I guess, I mean, you made it this far into the video anyway. So, I, uh, I am grateful for that. Listening to me ramble about a book that no one cares about. For probably not that long, actually, because I don't think I've been recording for that long. It feels like it's both been longer than it should be, but shorter than I feel like it has. It's confusing. 
The human brain is a weird thing. I guess also, in case anyone does want to know, because I try not to do uh, a narrated, narrative type thing too much in the book, if at all. Um, you know, I describe what's going on, but I won't just act like I'm speaking to the reader, like I'm a third party that knows you're a reader, I know what's going on in the world, and so I'm just going to explain things to you. That That's kind of like the way you would explain epilogues of a character. I might do something like that for the epilogues, but as it stands, that's not actually, that's not how anything in the book is really written. Um, and so, because of that, and because these characters live in the world that it's in, they start out with knowledge, of course, of what's going on around them, that you don't have, and that might be a little confusing to people. Um, it, it, things get explained as time goes on, but at the start it might be a little confusing and off-putting. So I can give a brief rundown of the plot, if someone doesn't want to hear this. I doubt anything else of real consequence is going to be said in the episode. So, you know, stop listening, come back later or something. Once you have uh, gotten past the point. But essentially, basically what you're looking at is... Um, the country of Amaruan, which worships the, the sun god Amaru, under invasion by a crusade that follows some mysterious force called the Nebula, discovered by their leader Merrick in the city of Caligan. Those last pieces aren't too important, and you'll pick that up pretty fast. But basically, the only part of this country, which is who the good guys are, are a part of, that remains not controlled by the Crusade after the initial invasion is the capital city, also called Amaruan. It's, it's the same name for both the capital city and the country itself. Um, and it's basically the last bastion of resistance, real resistance. There's some people around the country, but nothing in any significant number. Basically, the city is completely isolated and under siege for the duration of the book. So, the Crusade sort of runs everything that's everywhere else. As it's pretty simple. Uh, and the main characters introduced at the start are mercenaries who just do work in the area. While the Crusade's busy trying to, you know, bring order about the savage land of people who are fighting them. Which really isn't that savage, if I'm being honest here. There's a lot of re heavy religious themes. Uh, very, like... All the main characters, the, the main good guys, believe in and worship pretty much a particular, the, the god of their land, who's been the god of their land for a very long time. And the other side, of course, has deeply religious undertones, the Crusade does, for, uh, for the nebula that they worship. And, to an extent, for their leaders as well. Like the people who are in charge of the Crusade... A lot of their people are uh, rather fanatical in in their devotion to the people who are in charge. Which, you know, is pretty typical of humans. Going up instead of down in this game is really freaking weird as a path of progression. I really gotta say that. Ow! Wait a minute, I have shuriken. Those are handy. Um, that was part of, that, that kind of ties into what I was saying before, where there's no real social commentary or anything like that. Anyone who, uh, who watches another video of mine as well, my Christmas video, which I think got more negative attention than anything else, uh, will know that I am a Christian. Not a Catholic. I am, uh, not a part of any overarching, you know, primary Christian organization that runs things. We're far more independent. And pretty simply, just believe the Bible. More than anything else. Which is absurd to some people. You're all allowed to believe what you want. Uh, and I don't try to, to change that. Or, I don't try to control that. Um, I'm happy to argue my point. But, because of course, you know, I believe what I believe for a reason. I think it's right. So, naturally, I would want other people to think what's right. But I can't make anyone, nor would I even if I could. Now that said, 
nothing in this book is meant to represent or be a part of any real world religious anything. Alright, so Amaru, uh, sorry, Amaru, the, which yes, I know that's a real name and it's pronounced differently. I didn't actually know that at the time when I started the book, ironically. I, I decided, while well, after I had written most of it, huh, I should probably look this up. What if this is a name of something? And it's, in fact, the, it's a name in some South American cultures. Um, you'll hear it if you ever play Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Wildlands. You'll hear it there. It's the name of the original leader of the rebel movement in the game. It's also the name of, like, some South African plant god or something. Or not South African. South American plant god or something. I don't know. Um, it's actually the name of deities. I didn't know that. This has nothing to do with that. And, uh, and it doesn't have... He's a benevolent deity. He is not supposed to be representative of... Of God. Nor is the nebula supposed to be representative of the devil or anything like that. Like I said, there's no allegory here. I have made this purely to be a fantasy world. Something that's fun and entertaining and engaging. That's its primary purpose. Uh, while also trying to make it cool. But, you know, not stupid. A lot of people are willing to sacrifice... It turns out... If you're willing to sacrifice uh, the sense of your world just to make it cool, whatever that means, you're probably neither. There are some people who can pull it off. Something like that. And that's really when they lean into the ridiculousness, you know? Like... I guess it's not if you're willing to sacrifice your world's seriousness. It's if you're willing to sacrifice its sense. So, for example, I've heard people make the argument about Zack Snyder's Rebel Moon, which, for anyone who has not seen it, don't waste your time. It's terrible. And I don't say that as someone who just hates Zack Snyder. I actually like, um, the Justice League, which I know a lot of people hate. I also like Batman vs. Superman and Man of Steel. A lot of people hated all of them. I liked them. I particularly liked the Snyder Cut of the Justice League, because I thought, was it Whedon who did it first? I was terrible. Not terrible, like, it, it certainly was uh, was better than a lot of other movies I'd seen. That was a pretty good superhero movie, but... It just, it did not feel right. The whole tone of it was just off. The Snyder Cut, much, much better. Uh, on top of actually tying things into the, the world properly, and giving the right sort of tone to a lot of the characters and events going on. So I did like that, but uh, but a lot of people hated it, and it, it apparently if you give Snyder free reign with, with nothing restraining him at all, the dude makes just terrible dreck. Like, it's, it is bad stuff, and so he's, uh, he's not very popular right now. At least not among people who actually care about the quality of, of their entertainment. This is this is quality entertainment right here. Um, what was I saying about that anyway? Right, right. So, what I heard basically about Rebel Moon is that in like the second movie now, there's a part of it where they're in this this giant ship. Like we're talking, you know, interstellar spaceship kind of ship. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Well, I gotta go back and get all this stuff. Look at all this loot. And the ship. This ginormous planet flying from into army carrying ship is powered by coal. Actual coal. Which is just the most ridiculous thing. Because while coal is a great power source, you are not flying to another planet with it. Like, yeah, it's just, it, you're not going to do that. Powered by, like, old 1800s, early 1900s coal burners. And it's ridiculous. And I saw someone, in defense of this awful world, say, no, it's fine. Because Snyder wasn't trying to make it make sense. He just wanted it to be, like... <laughs> he just wanted it to be cool. And that's stupid. So if you're willing to make something like kind of cool looking 
but it's just, it's out and out ridiculous, right? So, uh, for example, Thor Ragnarok, which is a real mixed bag. I actually enjoy it more than I don't, is the best way I can put it. It's got a lot of things I don't like about it, but it's got a, a good number of things that I do. It's serious at times, but not very often, because it, it really undercuts itself all the time. It tries to be, it, it thinks it's way funnier than it is. Uh, and a lot of that's due to, to Taika Waititi, who really thinks that he is hilarious. When you give him free reign, then you see how bad he really gets. But regardless, you know, it's, it's got its flaws. But for the most part, it, uh, it just sort of leans into the absurdity of everything that's going on. And just sort of runs with it. Which, you gotta be careful how you do that, because it will both, it'll make your story lose all of its weight, right? And that was one of the things that Ragnarok actually kept, was despite how ridiculous most of the movie felt, it also felt like there were real stakes here, like people, lots of people are already dying, and lots more are going to die. That things were actually happening in the world. Um, that felt like they had stakes, despite how ridiculous most of it did feel. And when it got to the end, it did, in fact, put on a, a more serious tone. What still wasn't as serious as it probably should have been, but it was more serious. And so it did lean into the absurdity, but it was far more tolerable. Because it didn't take itself seriously either. Right? It was cool stuff. And it also acknowledged, yeah, this is all kind of ridiculous. As superheroes inherently are, but you don't want to do that too much, otherwise no one cares what happens. And you want people to be invested in the outcome of your story. So, while the story, of course, the people in it, they, they take themselves seriously. Uh, I don't. I mean, it's a story at the end of the day. And like I said, I don't think this is a masterpiece. I don't think I'm a great writer. Heck, I probably... Whoa, I would probably wouldn't even consider myself to be a good writer. I think it's alright. Oh, goodness. And while I do think it's kind of fun and cool, just because, of, you know... I made it. Of course I think that. Otherwise, why would I have made it in the first place? Um... I wouldn't in any way try to say that it was beyond Fallen Tolls to donate blood. I really like the work they put into those things. Um, I don't know. I kind of lost my initial point along that, that whole train at some point. I take the world seriously. Especially within it. Oh, come on. I just want to get to the thing. But me personally, at the end of the day, it's just a story. It bears no anything on reality. No part of it. Its outcome, its inception, its response, anything, really affects the real world like, at all. It affects me only because... You know, I, I actually, I gain something if people really like it. Um, but that's really it. Nothing about it really matters. So I don't take it that seriously. And, of course, I am willing to accept real criticisms. Because I know it has flaws. I am a human, after all. Ow. Ow. And I would rather the future be better than, uh, than the present. Of everything that I do. All this a long-winded way of saying, I'm trying to keep talking about the book for at least a decent while to give people a video to watch that's more than, you know, two seconds. But, if, if you already got the gist of it, then you already have the, the gist of it. And you don't really have a reason to hang around unless you enjoy hearing me continue rambling. I'm gonna get that chest. I'm going to kill that jellyfish and get that chest and take my money back. Not letting these things keep my gold from me. What is on fire under there? How was something on fire under there? I swear, things in this game are real concerning. You know what bothers me more than almost anything else about playing on expert mode that I didn't notice until I really started playing on expert mode a lot? Was the enemies, especially zombies, will jump all the time at the least convenient times. And I hate that. I'll take the torch. It's so frustrating 
when you're about to clock this thing and you know that it's going to knock it back enough, it's not going to be a problem, and then it leaps at just the wrong time, and it catches you, and your weapon hits it, and you barely repel it back, and then it jumps again right back into you because it didn't get pushed back far enough, and you just go round and round and around in that circle until, of course, you're dead. I despise that. I don't like these jellyfish either. They're going to ignite the second I'm in here. Come on, just go off. There you go. Just need to get my money, get into that house. Take whatever's there. Emerald, got it. Uh, and goodbye. A second one? Are you kidding me? I love magic mirrors, but why would you give me two? I could have used anything. Hermes boots would have been awesome. What is this? Oh, that's a boulder. I don't know. I think I'm just about done here. I've probably squeezed about as much content as I could out of this. I appreciate anyone who stayed here and listened. There's another bowler down there. Screw that. I appreciate anyone who, uh, who stayed and listened through it. Even though it's probably unnecessary for you to do so. I've, uh, I've received a decent amount of support on this channel already. There's people who seem to actually like my, uh, my style of sort of relaxed reality. I've never been a fan of the YouTube overreactions. I know that's, uh, I've also never been a fan of the begging, so I try to avoid that, even though, again, I do get it. I totally understand. Uh, I know why others do it, and I know it isn't, like, wrong. It's not an inherent wrong. It's a thing I don't really like, so I don't do it. Because my response, whenever I see a YouTuber ask for subscribers, is an inherently negative one. Uh, my immediate feeling is, well, now I'm not going to do it. I generally don't at this point, because I've thought about it, and I'm like, you know, that's really not that, not that nice. This is all, they're, they're asking for so little, and it genuinely does help a lot. So I just do it at this point. And generally, I try to do it whenever I, uh, I figure out. Or not figure out, whenever I remember. Uh, that's a thing I can do. Now, I won't do it all the time. I'll do it if I like the video. If, if you have one video I like, you've earned a subscription. Just off the bat, as far as I can tell, or as far as I'm concerned. And the only reason I say that you have to, to earn that is because it's the only leverage I, as an independent watcher, has. The only thing I have that can possibly influence decisions of what I like and don't like on YouTube is my ability to subscribe, especially now that the dislikes have pretty much been removed. Although I can still kind of see them. I think everyone probably can, that that extension that lets you. Yeah, good luck getting rid of that, YouTube. That's a stupid thing anyway. Oop, ah, come on now. But yeah, again, I will ask as well, if anyone does have uh, anything positive to say about the book, please leave it a positive review on Amazon. That really will help me a lot. Alright, well. I think this has pretty much run its course. Hold on, let me just kill this thing. I've said what I came to say. And keeping this going longer is not going to make people more likely to listen to me anymore. So I think I'm going to end this one here. I'll get back to, uh, to actually recording another game series. Like, tomorrow as well. I just wanted to get this out of the way since my book only recently went live. Um, I just ask people to, to go check it out. Alright. Yep. Link down in the descriptions description. Thank you all for watching. I will see you in the next one.